Howdy folks. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this red object keeps coming into frame or not. That's an olive. It's the logo of Harper Perennial and people who have been very kind to me over the years and who published the paperback version of this book, Coop, A Year of Poultry, Pigs, and Parenting. It's about chickens, pigs, and babies. Um, I thought Coop was a great name for this book because there's a chicken coop on the cover and I'm holding the chicken and there's chickens all around me. And then the first day the book came out, I was on the radio and the host said, welcome author Michael Perry here to talk about his new book, Co-op. Didn't see that coming, maybe should have. All right, I'm just going to read a brief selection from chapter one of Coop. This morning, while sp this morning while splitting wood, I attempted to clear my left nostril using a rustic maneuver known as the farmer snort and misfired badly. My eustachian tubes have yet to assume their former diameter. I bubblegummed an eardrum, shot fizz out both tear ducts, and may have permanently everted one eyeball. I believe I sprained my uvula. The act of blowing one's nose without benefit of Kleenex is a skill appreciated along a wide spectrum of background and endeavor. Synonymous terms include fisherman's tissue and air hanky, and my personal favorite, snot rocket. But I grew up calling it a farmer snort, because them's my people, and them's who taught me. The lessons were not formal. Watch and learn, learn by doing. Same way I learned how to spit. Although Dad nearly derailed me there. We was walking from Oliver Ballrood's barn to the house for a lemonade break between unloading hay wagons when I puckered up and gobbed a stringer down my miniature bib overalls. I had been watching Oliver all day. He was a diminutive Norwegian and an accomplished spitter. Not big tobacco-y streamers, just frothy little pips, but he did it constantly, and the flex flew sharp and straight. Gosh, it was just the neatest thing. He could do it while talking, pitchforking, or backing up the tractor. I wasn't even in kindergarten yet, but I was trying to march beside my dad like a little haymaking man, and I guess I figured spitting would be the thing. When I goobered on my bibs, dad didn't even break stride. He just looked down and said, Don't spit until you know how. Boy, that set up a conundrum. I guess I got around it. Later, when I lost my milk teeth, the new set came in with a pretty good gap. <laughs> it's called the diastema. This helps with the aiming and has a rifling effect. Given a gift, you'll work with it. I can sit in the kitchen and knock a horsefly off your doorknob. Executed smartly, the farmer snort is a source of transcendent clarification. In short, it really lightens your head, and consequently, your day. On the other hand, a misplayed snort can put a serious crimp in your karma. As with most things in life, your odds of success improve through focus and rehearsal. Determine your dominant nostril. Visualize success. Think through the snort. That kind of thing. I've encountered people who claim to be able to perform a hands-free double-barrel farmer snort. I'm skeptical and not about to hang around while they prove it. The first time I saw my wife farmer snort, I felt a renewed flush of affection and I thought... Now there is a woman who can endure. Alrighty, take care of each other. See you around. Forward.